Hey, Grandpa, how are you? All right. Why don't you tell me some stories about, you know, how it was as a black man in World War II? In World War II? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, during World War II, I was in the Navy. Yeah. And uh, I've been signed from the Navy. I was 17 years old. I signed up from the Navy in 1945. And I, when I went in there, it was segregation. And uh, the blacks, when I went in the Navy, no matter how much education you had, you could have been high school, college, or whatever, you still had to go in the, in the Navy and the steward made branch. That's serving the officers. Right. No matter no matter what your what your uh, limit, uh, your height was on education or whatnot and all like that, you still was a steward's mate. I didn't know that when I went in there, but when I got down to boot camp, that's when I found out. As I went down to boot camp, they took us from New York here, took me down to boot camp, uh, to the Perryville, Maryland, outside of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, the night, the day that we took, when they called me down to go into service, they took me down on the train, we went on the train, went down to Maryland. Guy picked us up from the train, from the station, the train station, took us out to a spot. During that time, the Navy had a barracks. The, the, the barracks where we took our training was way out on the upper hill in Perryville, Maryland. And when we went there, we got in there around one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when we uh, got there, we they lined us up. Took us up to a big hall like the armory. It's a big space to place right, there, right. like an armory. But what I didn't uh, understand was I learned later we had a company commander. Now there was a white guy and a black guy. Mm -hmm. The black guy was our company commander. The white guy was for the, for the whites, which I didn't understand. I didn't know at that time. Right, right. So when they lined us up to take us in there into the shower hall, the black guy was officer, company commander was standing on one side and the white guy was on the other side. Right, uh -huh. So as the blacks and the whites, we were going to, going up to the door together. But the white guy took, picked every white guy that went over, we pulled him over to the one side and the black guy was standing there. When I got up there, he pushed us over to the other side. Right. And when we marched into the, drip, the hall together, which now it wasn't that way, I didn't know it was that way before we went up there, but we, they marched us down the hall on a long road. And then the guy took the white guys, he took them on the other side, they marched them down and we were facing each other. And as soon as they went through a few indoctrinated things that they went through with, uh, the black guy told, took us, they broke us up into groups like, and they took us over to the barracks, the black guy took us over to our barracks and the white guys went to them. I didn't know such thing as segregation at that time. Yeah. That's what you call segregation. Right. We and went how there. You, how do you feel about that? I feel very bad about that when I went up in there. I was only 17 years old yeah. and I was on the train going down, but on the train going from New York down, uh, there was a white and the blacks. We was on the train together laughing, joking, and having a good time. And me and a couple of the white guys there, we had already made up our plans on what we would do when we got to the base, how we would live together, and where we were going to live. We were going to live together and what we would do and everything, go out and everything. But when we got down there, it was all together different. The whites, they took them one way and they put the blacks over on the other side. And were you paid the same um, way or the people? Or the whites, they paid more? The, the, huh? The pay was different too because the whites went in, we went in the steward's mate, the white went in as seamen. And they paid at that time was like twenty some dollars a month or whatever it was for us, twenty one dollars a month. But with the seamen, they got a much higher pay. Because they're white, right? Because they were white. Right, right, right. So you see what the difference was there? Mm -hmm. And on the base, something else I didn't know until later. We we started going through boot camps. After he broke us up and took us over to the barracks where we would go was gonna live for the next four weeks. Mm -hmm. We went into one of all black was in there. The white ones I didn't learn until later, they had a dummy ship. A ship made out more or less like a wood or something. Uh -huh. And I didn't know this till later. And they trained the white guys over on that side how to be uh, boats was made and everything on out of that ship on land. So when they go aboard ship, 
they would know what to do. You know, like uh, you got seamen first class. You got all kind of different categories which they would be working as. Boats was made, did everything. Over here on the outside, but nothing was strictly stewards made, where you go serve the officer. So what was your rank um, exactly? Stewards made third class. Third class. Okay. You start in third class, second class, and then first class stewards made. But over there with the seamen was all together different. You can go to CIC team, combat information crew, you had all kind of different titles. And then to today, those black ones got all kind of beautiful titles in there. Now today it's a wonderful thing to get in there because right. you, you you can go up, you, the sky's the limit, you yeah. know. Now it's equal now. Yes, right. it's equal now. But it was terrible during my time. And I was young, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And then we were leaving from New York, young white and black, we was together coming out of here in New York, going down, going to the base camp and all like that. You know, the fellas having a good time, laughing and joking, and everybody was having a good time. So we didn't know that you would be split. We'd already made plans. You know, what we would do when we got there, we would, several of the guys, we would get together and we would do certain things together, fun and all like that, like young fellas would do and whatnot. But when we got down, they were just all together different. Yeah. You put the blacks over here, but this was on TV, incidentally, years ago, Channel 13. Most of the time, they tell you then what the ranks were and what the ranks were for the Navy, mm -hmm. the blacks at that time, in the 40s. This was in 40, 45. Mm -hmm. But it was, a, it was a hurtful thing then, and I wanted to get back out of there too right away after right. I got in there. After <laughs> I found out that they were discriminating against, you know, separate you like that. But, but exactly I, after I got there, I made up my mind. I said, well, I'm here now, so I might as well just make the best of it until I get out of here. Right, but exactly how we treat, you know, treat unfavorably. Like, did they spit on you? Like, like put glass in your food, thing like that? Like, no, how we exactly didn't. Did you, did no, treat you we didn't. no, we didn't do that. As a matter of fact, we didn't do that. And not only that, but we didn't eat, eat together either. Now, what we used to do is, every morning, before we used to go up for breakfast, uh, we would do, each company, see, they broke us up into companies, so many guys to a company in the barracks. Every morning when we got to get up and go, we'd line up outside and they started to teach us how to drill, how you drill in order, in orderly fashion. And when we'd go to get up, at, when we get up in the morning, we'd go to the child hall. They'd take company, one company at a time. Like there was around about, say, 10 companies. 10 companies at about 30 guys, say, in each company. Mm -hmm. Each one of them is broke up. You got... 30 guys, I got 30. Right. You get lined up and come outside and put your guys out and drill them and let them line up and get in order. And then the next guy would be back behind him. He would have his guys and his company the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now in that child hall, we could look, looking down here, the child was sitting way up on the hill like, and he would, carry, he would tell you over the loud speaker up there what company come in first, you know. Okay, company like my company was X464. Okay, come to X-464, he would holler over the loudspeaker, come on up. And then we would drill up and go up to the child hall to get our breakfast. The next company would be the same thing. He'd drill, and then he would take him on up. And the next company, just go on down the line until everybody got breakfast. Right, right. That was the way that we broke up in the boot camp. That's what's called boot camp in the Navy at that time. You're 86 years old, right, Grandpa? Mm hmm You're 86, right? Yeah. Uh, and how, tell me, how do you feel about a black president in America? Well, I never really thought that there'd ever be one, though, in my time. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> so, so, I never thought there'd be a black one in there. But at least I didn't live to see the day that there was one in the White House. Right. See, those things were just, it was just out the question uh, and all like that. Another thing, too, that whenever I come along during my time and all like that, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've been three different, what you call races, more or less like. We first was Negroes. Yeah. Then we were colored. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now today we're Afro-American. We forgot black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and black and um, Negroid. Yeah, all right. So Negroid. you add that yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's how many, that's, that's the way we were. Right. That's how far we've come again, too. You know what I mean? You see, 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 a lot of changes have changed since the time when I came along, and it has changed for the better for blacks, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, up, and uh, I tell you, and ever since the presidents come along, especially like the Kennedys when they become president, 
and uh, on up the line that way. Things have changed for the blacks wherever and we find equalization now with a lot of the blacks and a lot of things, but not everything, but some, most things, blacks have the privilege of them that they didn't have the privilege before. Right. You go, I used to go to the bus station to get on the bus to leave there to go from one town to another from where I was born at in Lumberton, North Carolina. You go to get on the bus where you knew where your place was. You go in the back of the bus. Exactly right. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, you, got, you learn to live with it because that's the way it was at that time. And uh, no one tried to change. All of a sudden, when this thing, when Martin Luther King came up and Rosa Parks came up, yeah. they were arguing in Alabama about the bus. She was getting on the bus and they wanted her to move to the back. She says, well, I'm, I refuse to go to the back. Right. So now the blacks found a way how to break up with that. But they said, well, okay, if that's the way you feel about to go to the back, then we won't take the bus. We'll walk instead. Right. Now the company going to lose money now. If all the blacks walk and don't ride the bus, then the little company, you know, Right. You know what I mean? See, then they're going to lose money. Finally, that they kept on doing that until they finally broke them down where the blacks could go sit on the bus anywhere they wanted to sit. That was the cause, too, how they broke that. And so many things are broke down. Going into a uh, store, you couldn't go in the store and sit down at the counter and have a soda. Mm -hmm. All right? Demonstration came up about that. And finally, they had to break that up where they let blacks go in and sit down anywhere they want to sit and then have their soda, like everybody else. Right, exactly. See, all these things came along during my lifetime and all, and so many more. It just takes a lot of time to sit down and try to think back on it, but those are the times that I came up in, what you call the time of segregation and discrimination and all like that. Uh, and some states, they had it was worse than others. It was Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, New Orleans, and all those southern states. They were something but me. We never had that to bother with too much, especially on busing like buses and all like that. You know why? The town where I come from, there was no bus. You walk. They only had school buses there, and the school buses oh. for the white kids. <laughs> <laughs> Never so, that. In my little, up until today, in my hometown, where, in the long time where I was born at, there ain't no bus there. If you ain't got your own car or your own transportation, you can walk. Wow. Do you get it? And yeah. that's like today. They still got that down there. They ain't got no city buses. You know, like here in New York, you get to walk out here, there's a bus out there where you can catch a bus, mm -hmm. you know. They have a few, a, a couple of blacks, maybe get them a little piece of sta taxi stand over there somewhere across town. Mm -hmm. And you could call up and get one of the taxis to come take you across different places and whatnot. But that's the only way other than that, you better have your own car, your own transportation. Mm -hmm. See, so there's so many things have changed today. That ain't changed down there, though, believe it or not. If you go to Lumberton right now, you're a... You, <laughs> If you go there right now, there ain't no bus for you to ride. See? So there's so many things have changed today. Well, you kids today don't have that to, 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 to worry about. You come up in a different uh, atmosphere. Yeah. We're more spoiled, I guess. Huh? I mean, it, yeah. it was, it was, say, uh, a lot of kids are oh, actually too spoiled in the way of speaking because they, a lot of them don't seem to want to do nothing with their lives. Right. They want to take the easy way out, you know what I mean, things like that. And that, I think, is very rough and bad on the, especially a lot of minority kids, the black kids. Right. See, they're they, 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 they they're looking, for, in other words, for something for nothing. And uh, everybody just put on this earth, we know from my time coming up, you put it for a purpose. And you, you're you supposed to be here for a meeting, some sort of a meeting. Right, to some right. degree. And you, exactly. you, 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 you just don't walk every day and do the same thing and look somebody hand it over to you. If they go, a lot of kids, if they go to the job, the first thing they do is look around at the man, tell them, well, your job is this or your job is that. Well, he don't have the bill, he don't have the first ounce of education, but yet still he want to sit behind the desk where the white man is. Those things, I mean, that's the way the mind is taught. Right. That's why they're trying to bring up the black kids and teach them today to tell them education really is the key to success in your life. Right. And another thing, common sense too. Of course, you can have all the, edu the, the education that you once you can get all, you can go to college, you can go to 10 colleges. But if you don't have common sense, then you're still in trouble. Right, <laughs> right. Huh? Right. Because that common sense is where you make it in life. You know what I mean? Right. Along with your education. Exactly. What you got to do, you must have education, though, to get, to get today. And life has changed so much today and all like that. 
the, the life has done gone so far way out there, so far into this technology and all like that, computers and all that type of stuff and all like that. Mm -hmm. You 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 got to go to school somewhere to get to, to learn it. You just don't pick up by computers and all like that. Now white kids and uh, foreign kids coming into this country, they coming into this country, going to school like mad. Computers, computers, everything, and everywhere you go. And I go to a doctor every time I go to the doctor's office, full of them in there, tapping on some board in there. Right. Right. They know how to do it, but they know. But what do I know about it? I don't worry about it. I work on some old age now, but most young kids, they don't know the first thing about no computer. Right. Black ones. That's why not to kind of start them. And uh, that's this mayor really is fighting for one of the things. The kids from uh, uh, kindergarten, they're trying to. Back them up to kindergarten to teach them kids. Start teaching them early. Made the Yeah, the new one. Yeah, yeah. He's, he talk, He keeps talking about that kin kindergarten, kindergarten, kindergarten. But they're trying to get the kids to start them off. You start them off early. Foreign kids when they come here, they excel. Seem like to be much faster than the black kids anyway. You know what I mean? When they come here, first of all, it was they excel like to me. I guess in the young countries before they come here, a lot of them. And then a lot of them are so smart to. They even outsmart the white kids. The white kids are supposed to have the basic word thing here. The key in life is education. It is, it is definitely. You gotta have that. You gotta have that. All right, Grandpa, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love you, Grandpa. Uh -huh.